Okay guys, this is the Super Cheater's Guide to Overclocking Memory. Okay, this is going to be really straightforward. Now, I am using a Gigabyte motherboard. I've got the X470 Gaming Set 7. I have only really noticed this trick to work with Gigabyte and Asus motherboards. I think it might work with MSI as well, I'm not sure. ASRock, definitely not, and any other brands would have no clue. So, obviously the easiest way to supposedly, I'm gonna bring my hands in here, overclock the RAM is to set an XMP profile, which this is profile one, and so if you do that, it'll automatic the multiplier, it'll automatic the individual timings, and woohoo, life will be good, we're overclocking our memory, right? Well, kind of. But, so for instance though, if we go to the advanced voltage settings, we will notice that our DRAM voltage is set to 1.2 volts, so that's the profile. We actually have a ton of voltage headroom that we can mess around with. So here's where we're gonna talk about the actual way to overclock. So it's in it, I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you guys, it's super easy, especially with the Gigabyte board. So I'm just gonna take this guy, and instead of doing auto, I'm gonna just set it to a straight 1.4 volts. Bam, done. So now that I've got my voltage set manually, I'm gonna come back and go into the advanced memory settings. Or I could go back to advanced frequency settings, either way. But if I go there, I can do it right here, profile one, auto. But to show you a little bit extra, we'll just come here. So we're gonna disable this profile. There's, we don't want it enabled now because we're going to be manually setting frequencies and we want the timings to automatically set. We're gonna let Gigabyte set the timings. Then we're just gonna to go to this memory profile. If you don't have a click to drop down, you can sometimes type in a memory pro like a number, like 35, and if I hit enter, it'll come close to it and it'll pick 35, 33. Or you can use the up and down arrows or sometimes page down or page up to change the values. Now since I've already gone through and done the overclocking on this and I know what's stable, I set it to 35.33. But you know, you might want to start somewhere safe. So say we start somewhere like 33, 33, 33 megahertz. We go there, we're gonna save those settings. Leave the timing mode on auto. Gigabyte will set all of that on its own. So I'm gonna put this back up to where I know, oh wait, this is my four sticks. So my four sticks would probably be stable somewhere around there. So I'm gonna save it, F10 it, save configuration, yes. And now we're gonna see if this boots, plain and simple. If we don't get a boot error, oh yeah, and then of course I've got the fact that my, um, I've got two computers going to this monitor and I have to swap, swap inputs. Alrighty, so let's come back over now to the current computer. That's a good sign. Look at that. We are running. Coming up to the screen. Bam, we're in Windows. So that tells us we're probably not even pushing the limits as much as we want. But to really make sure we're stable then, what I like to do with memory is I actually like, so I've tried mem test, I've tried a bunch of different things, and I've, I've tried so many things that would tell me I'm stable, and then immediately after finding out that it, the test told me I'm stable, I'd get into a game and crash. This is my favorite test for testing memory, OCCT. So what I do is I set the memory to 90%, I like to enable the ABX capable LIN pack and I let this baby fill up the memory. And so you'll watch the CPU will come up to 100%. I don't use all the logical cores because that's really, really stressful on the system and if you're trying to do temperature monitoring and stuff, it's just unnecessary. Um, but if you really want to test that stability, you could use all the cores. And then you just got to watch this line. This line is going to keep coming all the way up until it fills to 90%. I'll let this run 30 minutes. You, so far I've found if I get 30 minutes, I'm probably stable. And so this is going to come up until this little blue line hits 90%. We're not going to go that far. We don't need to. There's another way I've found to really test a quick stability. And that is Rise of the Tomb Raider. I don't know what it is about this game. This game loves to destroy memory. And if your memory is even just a little bit unstable, Tomb Raider will find it. 
I mean, even Far Cry 5, I could pull out and run a benchmark and run it for a while. Tomb Raider, crash instantly. Um, maybe GTA 5 would do that. I don't know about other games. I've Some of my newer games that I've got, they still don't seem to hit the memory as hard as, for whatever reason, Tomb Raider does. So, if I hit continue here, I've got a spot where I've camped Lara to make sure that... Well, we just gotta keep this fire lit, you know? If we don't keep the campfire going, then we might have problems, right? So, let it get through the loading time and all that fun stuff. And we're waiting and waiting. Still waiting. I've got a solid state drive, guys, but it's not NVMe, so we gotta wait a little bit for load times. And bam. So I'll just leave Lara sitting here by this campfire with that with the snowflakes and the fire and the smoke and stuff going. And if it may if this makes it through 30 minutes, I don't even have a memory issue anymore. I never see a crash, never see a blue screen. Now, that's been my quick, easy way to memory test overclock. Now you probably still have to do thorough testing and stuff to really know if you're stable, but usually if those two programs are working, I'm set, I'm done. So there you go guys, that's how I do memory overclocking. Very fast, very easy. If you really want to fine tune it though, you're going to have to individually set those timings, test things out, see if something's not working, see if something's stuttering, see if something's lagging, change it. Optimizing timings can take forever, which is why I really like this method because I can get a lot of extra performance. It doesn't have to take a super long time. I'm not saying this is the best method, but this does seem like the easiest one. Hope you enjoyed this video. I will catch you later.